Hi, my name is Melissa Miller, and this is Sue Howell, and we work in the lab of Dr. Bray Kaplan at the University of Georgia. Today, we're going to be showing you how to um, process an abomasum from worm picking. So this morning, we harvested this abomasum from a calf at a processing facility. And remember, the abomasum is in a C-shaped um, morphology, and this end would be connected to the small intestine, and this end would be connected to the omasum. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to cut, cut along the outer edge of the C. So Sue's going to do that for us. And it does help to have really sharp scissors, but you um, want to go into the outer edge and then just cut right along the, the edge, the flat edge. And it is pretty tough, and sometimes there's a lot of fat, so it kind of has to... Uh, it's kind of tough to work through that sometimes. Okay, and as we open that up, then you can see all the contents, of course. But then you'll be able to see these folds. And you can see the layers or the folds there and all the contents that are laying within all of that. So the first thing that we like to do is to basically just take the majority of the contents out. So we'll just do that by hand and we'll have a, a bucket and we'll just put the contents into it. So we'll just kind of scrape it out. Remember the worms are right in here and you can see them grossly. So the homunculus you can see right. grossly. Some of the other worms are very small and would not be seen uh, grossly. So the main worms that are, we're looking for from in the abomasum of cattle are Hamacus placei, Ostertasia ostertagi, and Trichostrongylus axia, with Hamacus being the biggest one, and then Ostertasia ostertagi, and then um, Trichostrongylus axia being very small. Really, the main ones that you can see grossly are the Hamacus. Also, when you were looking at the abomasum in the folds, you want to look for lesions that may be present in the folds or in the uh, lining. And the lesions would be indicative of maybe some ostracasia. Look at those little, see the little bumps? So those are some examples of the lesions that are there. Um, let me take some water and kind of wash, wash the contents away. Oh, look at those lesions right there. Look. Mm -hmm. Not so shiny. Try to get over it. So we can voice over it. Okay. okay. That's good. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. See those lesions really well, which would be indicative of um, ostracasia. Today we're mainly. Oh, here's a worm. Look. Okay. Right there. Right on my fingertip. So the hamacus will you have an actual seat moving. So there, there is a small, uh, well there's a worm, of uh, the red or large worm, and you can see that moving around slightly. Right there. I might miss there in that water. So then we like to use, okay, we like to use a petri dish in order to be able to separate the worms out. So we use a worm picker, and Sue will tell you about the worm picker. The worm picker is basically, you can use a small fine needle or maybe a dental file if you have access to that. And you can tape that on the end of a couple of applicator sticks. Sometimes there's a little, if you use a needle, a small needle with the hub, you can embed that into um, a little holder there so you can hold the worm picker. And then right here, this one that I found, I'll just pick that. Right there. And put it right in the water. Now, depending on what you plan to do with these worms, you can put them in saline to keep them alive for a while. You can put them in water, or if you want to use them for DNA, you can put them in 70% ethanol. If you put them in formalin, then that invalidates any DNA testing you'd want to do.
imagine right here. Can you see the, the discoloration right there? Like a blood supply in a little bit. Is that what you're looking at? Or what are you... Look at that. Okay, so then the other thing you'd need to do when you get as much of the contents out as you can, then we want to wash this in a bucket because some of the parasites get, they're all in these folds and you want to kind of wash as best you can to get all the um, material with parasites out into the water. So then water Using a smaller, smaller amount of water as you can use. And the reason for that is the more water that you have, then that's the more water you have to look through in order to find the worms. So if you're doing that under a microscope, it can take a really long time the more water that you use. So what we like to do is we have to like to have an empty bucket and also one with warm water or saline so that we can rinse it over the abomasum. So this is really like a two-person job. And I was going to say, let's put it in there and just kind of wash it up and down. We can put it in there and just sort of wash it up and down like you would be washing clothes, or old fashioned washing clothes. There you go. Now you've got a worm-free, supposedly, abomasum, and all your worms should be in your liquid material, so then you can look through that for worms. Is that one right there, Sue? Yes, I believe it is. Yep. Sure is. Got one. And there's one right, right there. So we can put that in the drink. Here it is. Okay, we'll put that in the petri dish right over here. Okay. And it did come right out in there. Now the Hamonchus placii, if they're adult females, then they would be very large compared to the males and they would also have a barber pole appearance because the gut filled with blood, these parasites suck blood, so the gut filled with blood would be wrapped around the uterus, making that swirling barber pole appearance, hence the name barber pole worm. Okay, so now what do you do? You have all these contents and how do you look at it? Well, what we do is we take small amounts, small aliquots, and we just look at each of them underneath the microscope. And what we're looking for, again, are those barber pole shapes for the females and the larger worms. And so um, we'll show you some more pictures of those.